Hello, I'm Jack Grady, and on behalf of the Archives and History Committee of the First Baptist Church on the Square in LaGrange, Georgia, we welcome Korean War veteran Harold Ross, and we thank him for his service to our country and now to our church. Harold, good to see you. Thank you so much for your willingness to come and share some of your, your experiences during that period of time in, in our history. We, uh, <clears throat> we know that you are a veteran with the Korean War. We uh, would just like to, to chat a little bit about your experience and uh, just uh, whatever you'd like to share with us, whether about your personal experience, about some people you remember from your experience. It's up to you as to how you want to proceed. But let me ask you, first of all, uh, were you drafted or were you, uh, did you volunteer? When I was in high school, a friend of mine uh, was in the Naval Reserve and he was getting paid for being two hours a week with uh, training there in town and he talked me into joining it and I thought it was a wonderful idea and I drew pay two or three times and then I graduated and I was getting ready to go to college and they activated the Naval Reserve and there we were. And there you were, you were <laughs> part of the U.S. Navy. They sent me to uh, Bainbridge, Maryland for training. This was basic, basic training? Basic yeah. training. Okay. And uh, it was not a bad experience for me because I was in football shape and uh, young and single. And uh, the one thing that was great about it was discipline. I needed discipline, just as I think every young man needs discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, I've thought many times that uh, the uh, Israelis have their children come out of high school, and uh, I think they make them pull two years active military service before they can go on to college or something well, nerd, else. It? And I think it would be a wonderful thing here because uh, the discipline we learned and the working together and uh, looking out for each other, it was worth a lot to somebody like myself. The uh, period of time I spent there, uh, we had many things that um, you might find uh, painful <laughs> I guess I could say that. Uh, we had several training things. I remember one, they told us to do this, and I was up to it, but we were going across this big mud hole, and uh, it was on a thing like a ladder was swinging out one after another, you know, and the man in front of me stopped, and he just hung there, and you know it's just a matter of time before he's going to drop, and you can't let him stop you. So I just took my feet, pushed him, and down he went, and we went on from there. And oh. they happened to have a picture of that, which they showed around at me kicking that guy off the board. Oh, okay. But uh, we, we did several things. I could not imagine why someone would join the Navy and not know how to swim. Mm -hmm. But it was an amazing thing to see how some of those people uh, came in there, and they would tie tin cans around them and push them in the pool. And they were scared to death, but they did it. Yeah. And I was a pretty good swimmer at that time. And uh, we went through uh, training there, and uh, we had to jump off the high tower and all, which yep. you're probably familiar with. Yes, and I am. A few of them were a little anxious about that, but that didn't bother me at all. As a matter of fact, the camaraderie and the time I spent there, uh, I enjoyed. The worst thing about the whole shooting match, and I'm using that word rather reluctantly, but I lost more sleep than I wanted to lose. Uh, they'd get you up in the middle of the night to go out and guard a garbage can or a <laughs> fire hydrant. And uh, we used to have that old phrase, uh, I walked my post a mile a minute with a big old gun and nothing in it. <laughs> okay. But we all did that. And I went through boot camp and did very well with it. But don't you think they were probably conditioning us to obey? whatever the commanding officer, whoever was in charge, we had to follow orders. Oh, think? yes. You so sure that, didn't want to not do that. that. Oh, I had a garbage can duty one night. I remember that boot camp. <laughs> how, how many days boot camp that was yours? 45? No, uh, I was there for, uh, what was it, 13 weeks, I believe. Okay. And... Uh, 
boy, it was great when you were graduating. You didn't know where they were going to send you. The Korean War was going on. Yes. We were hearing all sort of stories about the atrocities and so forth. And I had some friends that were over there that it was a terrible, terrible war. And uh, we just didn't know whether we were going there or where we were going. Yes. I was assigned to a ship out of uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Okay. And uh, about the most exciting thing that we had was when we detected a submarine right off Panama and uh, we tried the IFF, which is identification friend of foe, and uh, we tried it twice and they didn't respond. So we had to get clearance to do something about it. And when they finally said, blow him out of the water, we couldn't find him anymore. He was... He disappeared. disappeared. Okay. And, but that was a, an anxious moment, I'm sure. Well, to be honest, it was a fun moment because they, they just, uh, yeah. and of course, uh, my first experience there, the, the Navy feeds real well. I got a little heavy when I was in there, but within the uh, first week or two that I was in the Navy, we went to uh, uh, a hurricane, I think it was Hazel as I remember, and we followed that hurricane and gave all reports of the oh, wind and all that kind of stuff. And we went for maybe, I think it was a day and a half. Mm -hmm. And, of course, when you get ready to eat, you have to lift your tray up, you know, and hold your glass. And yeah. it, it wasn't very pleasant. But other than that, um, when we uh, went into certain things, we had fire control radar. And naturally, uh, that fouled up. We tried to shoot at a uh, bag that were dragging through the air and we shot some of the plane and uh, things never work out like you think they're supposed to but I guess that's why we have all that training. Yes, you learn by doing. Don't yeah, you? you do. You learn by doing. Well, uh, you mentioned some friends who were in combat. Uh, would you share some things you learned from them? Some, the some people wars? that I was in school with I talked to, I still talk to some of them about it, but they are mostly quiet. They, they, they saw such atrocities that, uh, especially when the Chinese came over the border, uh, they were executing our men. They were tying their hands and shooting them in the back of the head. I had one friend that uh, told me uh, one man was blown completely apart. Mm beside him and uh, all these things he, he I guess he'll carry to the grave it's horrible sure. I don't really understand to save my life how one man can treat another man the way they were doing that yes. torture and all that stuff mm -hmm. but we thought we were going right into that thing I figured I'd be up the yellow river there somewhere yeah. but we never did but you were ready well, you could, you uh, been prepared for it. I think every man on that ship, we, we had a good ship, and uh, we really enjoyed it on there. What kind of ship was yours? I was on Destroyer. Destroyer. Yeah, and uh, it, it wasn't a large contingency yeah. of men, a little bit over 100. Okay. And we all knew each other, and we all looked out for each other, and uh, it was almost like a college fraternity well, on there. What, what was your duty? Well, I was a radar man, and uh, I had, on a small ship like that, you have many duties other than just radar. Right, you stand, stand guard, yeah. had a schedule. And chip paint. And yeah, okay. <laughs> but uh, it, it was not a bad experience, and uh, I think that uh, all in all, I'd have to say, if I had to spend time in such a terrible war, I did it as well as anybody could, mm -hmm. because... Uh, wars are are terrible, and uh, the men I saw, I, I just do not understand how movies and TV show these men that are in war and they're scared and they uh, holler out and all. Because the men I was with, I would go to war with them any day, and you wouldn't find one of them doing that. Uh, we we really looked out for each other, and uh, it was a good camaraderie, and uh, you war enjoyed this. kills. Yeah, war kills some of the best of, of our youthful men. And it never hurt me to be in there. Of course, the government helped me when I got out and paid for my college. Yeah. But G uh, The GI Bill was continuing yeah. at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, I appreciate you telling us about uh, these friends of yours, uh, because while you were, your experience was shipboard, uh, they were on the ground, so to speak, right in the midst oh, yes. of the battle. So it, it's a significant difference. But yet you were in the support, in the support mode, I guess you could say. We and were all ready if they had called. Prepared for whatever. Well, the thing is, it was right after World War II, and patriotism was so great. And, uh, you know, not like today, you had in, under God in the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes. They still had Bible courses in school, yes. and uh, we still had that patriotic fever about us. Yes. And I, I, patriotism, patriotic, patriotic spirit was alive and, and well. It was then. I wished it was today. Yes. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, your duties, again, going back to your shipboard duties, uh, you, uh, when you were working with the radar equipment, were you standing a regular watch like 4 to 8 or 8 to 12 or midnight to 4? Or I think what? our hours were from can to can't. Can to can't. Can to can't. Oh, can to can't. Okay. Yeah, we, we uh, yes, we had certain times when we definitely had to stand certain watches. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, radar that would detect on the airplanes when we come out to uh, aircraft carriers. Okay. Uh, we would watch the planes going up and down on the radar screen, and if one of them messed up and hit the water, mm. we'd pull them out and. Uh, Usually the aircraft carriage sent ice cream over for everybody on the ship when they did that. But uh, it, it was interesting. I, for an old boy like myself, it hadn't been anywhere, and uh, all of a sudden there it was. <laughs> you grew up in North Carolina. Now. Greensboro, North Greensboro, Carolina. Greensboro, North yeah. Carolina. Okay. And this was a whole new world to you. When you it was there. for me, yes. Yes, I can relate to that, sure. When I grew up, we didn't even have a key to our front door. Uh, everybody knew where we lived. Everybody knew what we had. Doors. No, we didn't have to worry about anything. But the world has changed. Yep. Harold, uh, share with us, if you will, uh, one of your most memorable experiences. Well, the federal government realized that uh, people in South America didn't like us very much, and so they decided to send 12 warships into Colombia. And uh, we were going to march up to the uh, uh, Simon Boulevard Memorial in Lair Reef. He's the George Washington of South America. Ooh. But they didn't like us. And we went in there. We were all armed. And uh, they, they had a civil war going on at the time. So we went in there and laid the wreath and ran for our life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a waste of time. Uh, when, when people don't like you, these... You can't appease them with a wreath on a monument. Mm -hmm. So how long were you there? Just your ship, I mean. Uh, ship. We you stay in the area for a while. You, no, we were in there for three days, I believe it was, as best I can remember. Yeah, good. Well, uh, what ex what experiences did you have that during this period of time when you were in the Navy that helped prepare you for life? after the war? I can answer that very easily. When things were at all rough, I still remember the one favorite Bible verse. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branch. You can do nothing apart from me. So no matter what came up or when it came up, I knew that I had an advocate. Yes. And I was raised that way. Okay. And uh, it just meant so much to me. Well, I appreciate you sharing that, Harold. That's, that's significant. And anything else that you would like to share with us about your experience? Just, just this. I, uh, like our pastor said, and I really believe it, I, I, I just wish that we had things better in our world today. But uh, I remember what our pastor said. He said, uh, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves 
and call on me, I will forgive them their sins and heal their land. Yeah. And our land today really needs to be healed. It does need that. Well, that's, that's a great uh, scripture, and I appreciate your including it in here because I think it's appropriate. It's certainly appropriate any time for that matter, but looking back on your World War, your Korean War experience and uh, all of the things that happened since, the attitudes and, and the, uh, as you mentioned earlier, the We need more patriotism. We need more patriotism. We do. We do. Anything else you'd like to share? I can't think of it. Well, uh, let me ask you this. I know you are very, very involved in our church here, and we thank you for your service to our church. Uh, I know that you volunteer at the Senior Center. That's not the name of it anymore, but it's... I also in Celebrate Recovery here. Celebrate Recovery here. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, I had been in that until I got to where I couldn't hardly walk. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Say a word about that, I mean, the significance. Celebrate Recovery was a wonderful program, and it still is, but uh, uh, I know that some of those people came in, and this is true in life. You're going to have people take advantage of you, but if you worry about that, those that really need you will be missed. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'm what you call an easy mark, even where I'm at at the center. Uh, I have some people that take advantage of me, but that's their problem, not mine. And in Celebrate Recovery, we uh, had some people that would come in there and really sincerely be seeking, mm -hmm. and you could spot them very easily. Uh, we had what we call the small groups, and in the small groups, the, uh, had the men in one group and the women in another group, and I conducted those meetings quite a bit mm -hmm. but uh, no matter what kind of problem we've got here in LaGrange or even in, in our church uh, Christ Jesus is in charge and something that I've thought about quite a bit it doesn't matter what denomination it is or what church it is or where it is over half of every person in the congregation has not been saved over half? Over half, 50%, yes. And that's no matter what church. They've done so many surveys on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, this thing about being a witness, I worked in the jail ministry for quite a while. You did. I believe in the, in the ministry uh, of uh, witnessing more than anything else. And when I was in service, I did some of this. But uh, when I was young and single, I'm afraid I would kind of stumble through it. But uh, our church is a good church, a good opportunity for everybody in here to witness to somebody else. And uh, I can tell you one experience that happened in our church back home. I'll never forget it. Our pastor was a very good friend of ours, and uh, he, he was talking to me very candidly, and he said there was a lady came in the church, and uh, the usher showed her where to sit, and she sat down and sat there the whole service, and then she left. And that afternoon, about 2 o'clock, the pastor got a call and asked if it knew so-and-so. And he said, no, I never heard of him. Why do you think I'd know him? He said, well, she uh, was over here at the motel, and she hung herself. And she had one of your uh, church program brochures, and she'd written on the bottom of it, nobody cares. So he said since that, he has everybody stand up and shake hands and look around and see who's new because it really troubled him. But things like that happen. Yeah. You, you, we all are still our brother's keeper. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's a good statement, and uh, you're certainly a good witness, and I appreciate your, your willingness to share that. Back to your involvement out there at the Senior Center, and the correct name of it is... Active Life. Active life, which is very appropriate because there's a lot of activity exercise going on and so forth. And a lot of people, a lot of older people uh, our age who are there involved and in, in participating in those programs. And uh, That means a lot. We appreciate your willingness to serve like that. How many volunteers would you say they have out there? Oh my goodness. There's well over 25. And they're there every day. 
every day, and they're doing a good job too. Yeah. We could not function except for the volunteers. As you know, budgets are very tight. Yes, yes. Well, Harold, thank you so much for your your presence here today and your willingness, as I mentioned, to to talk a little bit about your world, your Korean War experience, and it brings back memories to me. I was also shipboard and in the Navy, but at a different time, a little earlier than you. Uh, we want to thank Paul Barnes. He's our technical expert who's actually recording this interview. Uh, he'll make several copies on a DVD and one of them, one copy, we'll keep down in the Heritage Room, and that'll be kept there by the Archives and History Committee. Uh, there'll be a copy that's given to the library in here in the church so that people, if they wish now or in the years to come, can check it out and view it. And then there's a, a copy that will be given to the museum on Main Street here in mm. downtown LaGrange for the public's use if they wish to come in and, and share that. But I wanted to point out too that you will receive a copy that you can keep and use uh, with your family, friends, if you wish, whatever. You, it's up to you. Thank you. you want. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Best wishes right. to you in the years Thank ahead. Thank you.